Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 film, The Platform. And when I watched it, it's available for streaming on Netflix. I believe it's a Netflix original, if I'm not mistaken. So you can catch it there. Um, it is a Spanish film, so it is subtitled if you're from the United States or any English-speaking country. So just know that. I know some people are very touchy about doing subtitles. Um, I would say if you, it, it's just a situation where you just don't like subtitles, power through it because this film is worth it. Definitely worth it. Now, I'm not going to do spoilers in this per se. It will be kind of thematic spoilers because I want to talk about some of the themes involved here, but I'm not going to do spoilers as in actual events of the movie. So thematically, though, spoilers. So make up your own decision. I, I would just recommend stop right now, go watch the platform, then come back and watch this because it will make even more sense to you, but you can also go ahead with it. I'm not going to ruin the actual movie for you unless you care about the underlying theme stuff. Actually could be good for some people. Some people like to know ahead of time what the themes are going to be and how it is so that when it when the movie's playing out, they can kind of make that connection while they're doing it. So either way, enjoy the review. Uh, directed by Galder Gastelou Rudia. Sorry, I probably totally butchered that name. Uh, this is his first feature-length uh, film he directed. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is a person to watch. I will be watching for the next thing that this person does because I did enjoy this film. It had a lot to say, and that's something I really like with horror films. Uh, it's written by David DeSola and Pedro Rivero. Neither of them really had anything recognizable for me on their virtual unknowns, basically, so good for them as well. I'm going to try and keep a tab on them as writers. Uh, this won the People's Choice Award at the Toronto International Film Festival in 2019, so that is important to note. That's where, like, all the best of the best horror stuff goes pretty much each year. So the fact that it won the um, People's Choice is a big deal. So uh, the beginning of this film shows a lot of eloquence and decadence, but with beautiful music, and it has a strong... It's doing beautiful music, but it has this one strong note that's very irregular, uh, it, but it's done kind of at regular intervals that kind of indicates things are off. You know, things look very nice and decadent and eloquent, eloquent and amazing, but the music is telling you every now and then there's just that one off note that doesn't fit, and that's a really awesome way to signal to the audience you're seeing something a certain way now, but it's actually a different way under the surface, and you'll get to that. And you don't have to wait very long with the film to actually get to that. This is one of the strengths of the film, in my opinion. It gets into what's going on very fast, but it doesn't explain everything to you immediately. And it goes at a nice pace, though, where even though there are, mo there are like stretches where there's not a whole lot actually going on, it still keeps you engaged and kind of uh, like intently watching because you don't know when a little piece of information is going to be revealed about what is going on with the whole story and where things are going. It's one of those things where like you, you never know when something's going to happen or you never know when another piece of the puzzle is going to be presented to you. So you're very engaged and that's an awesome way to do the film. It's also about an hour and a half long, so that's pretty much perfect for a horror film in my opinion. Uh, immediately this film actually reminded me of The Cube, uh, or I'm sorry, not The Cube, Cube, sorry, I forgot there's no The Cube by Vincenzo Natale, which is a movie I should definitely do a review on. That is a fun one, and it's been a while since I watched it. Uh, it mainly made me think about that because of kind of the environment it's set up in. It looks very bleak, it's very, I mean, just... Story-wise, it's very bleak, to be honest, but it, it, the environment, the sets, they, they also look very, very bleak. There's not a ton of color going on in them, and that just made me kind of think of Cube. The opening characters are old and young to represent someone who is old hat and someone who is a newcomer. Uh, Tira Magasi and Goring um, are kind of the representation of someone who has been there and someone who has just shown up. And so it's this kind of dichotomy of the beginning of the timeline versus the end of the timeline for anyone involved in this film. Um, so I, I think that's a cool way to kind of open things up because in a way, to a degree, it's like, am I seeing 
in this new per or in the older person what the new uh, the younger person is going to end up being later. So for people who have seen it, that would make a lot of sense. For people who haven't seen it, it might not so much. The way it jumps right into the situation, you really want to know how we got there. That's another great thing. It really does grab you with the concept. Uh, the way they set everything up, that it it brings so many questions in your mind immediately that just makes you like, I'm in, I need to find out what's going on, let's do this. Uh, you're in it for the ride. So I really like how it's a very attention-grabbing script. The music sounds like Music Concrete. For people who don't know what Music Concrete is, it's basically ta taking found objects essentially and doing making noises with them natural noises with them like you know clinking something against a bottle or dropping a coin on a table and then just kind of putting all those noises together to create music so this uses that and i think it's really cool because the film is simplistic environmentally and kind of story what well story wise it's simplistic but it's also complex uh, so in the, at the surface, it's simplistic. The environment is extremely simplistic and the sets. So the music also being simplistic is very cool and interesting. And the, the life that people have in this is also very simplistic. So it kind of plays into that as well. Um, simplistic and dark setting is a good backdrop for it, hopelessness. I said this was a bleak film. It is a bleak film. It looks bleak. It feels bleak. There's bleak, 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 bleak written all over it so if you need films that kind of have a, a super happy ending this one i can't say whether it is happy or not but the film is you know there, there's i'll talk more about the ending later but there's a lot of it's open for interpretation i feel like but i'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit i won't tell you what the ending is but things don't happen in a fast pace but the mystery of what's going on and what's to come keeps you engaged or he said that scarcity is a large theme in this it plays on the fear of not knowing what you get next in life and when that's the environment you become greedy where you can basically it's creating the whole supply and demand situation and what happens when the supply is much less and the demand is much more and you know so it's kind of looking at different situations for different characters uh but do they end up doing similar things or do they not end up doing similar things behaviorally uh there's definitely there's definite outright horror in this like outright horror so for anyone who's like oh i don't like this stuff that's just kind of more of a complex um thematic st story ordeal uh i just like you know in your face like straight up horror stuff you know people getting killed or tortured like whatever you're into it has those things so don't worry like you get the straight up horror stuff to satisfy that itch so i think this movie is good for a lot of different horror genre fans. Color is used very sparingly in this film, which actually enhances kind of a feeling of depression. The other good thing is when color appears, it means more because you're not used to really seeing it in the film. So I like how they employed that. There's a great point that you can persuade people below you, but not above you in society. Basically, if you're trying to get people to work with you or to see your point of view on anything, it's kind of making the point that those above you financially, um, culturally, whatever, in, within society are not going to listen to, you, listen to you. People below you can, but a lot of times it ends up being a situation where you have to figure out how are you going to make that happen. Like, is it going to be through being nice to this person or is it going to be through being mean to this person or what? You know, and and you see, you know, a few a few versions played out. The platform itself has a lot to set up on it for shooting, uh, and that must have been a real pain. Uh, that's one of the things I was really thinking about from an actual like technical perspective of making the film. The actual platform itself that the title talks about, uh, lots of stuff on it for setting up, and I can't imagine how many times they needed to reset that up and shoot things with it because uh, a lot happens with it. And I was just like, that had to be like maddening to have to do that work. And I wonder how many people had to do it too. I, I think about like weird things related to this. The ending provoked a lot of thought and maybe a bunch of different theories on the ultimate message. So that's one of the things is it's, it's not a super... 
for some people, it's not going to be a super straightforward film. And in the end, like I was feeling like I was really picking up on a lot of thematically what they were trying to do. But it, by the very end of it, when it played its ending out, I wasn't a hundred percent on what they were trying to say with the ending. And I was trying to think about it in the context of everything else that I'd kind of uncovered thematically. And I have a few theories on what that potentially could mean in the end. I'm not 100% sure, but for that reason, I would like to find out what other people kind of think about it. So I think I'm going to do a live stream and focus, uh, at least initially on the live stream, talking about this film, The Platform. But I will have another video just kind of saying when that's going to be and all that on my channel as an update. So just know that because I want to hear other people's theories. So just going to talk about some of the thematic stuff. Sorry if some of it is a tad bit redundant. I just kind of take notes as I am watching. Um, this is a clear condemnation of unchecked capitalism. Some people obtain their income level by choice and others end up at it by chance. So it kind of makes a point that some people end up in the film situation because they knew they kind of know they're going that way. Some people just end up that way and a lot of it has to boil down to human behavior specifically human behavior within a capitalist society and how you carry yourself you know like how are you interacting with the capitalist system but then there's also some situations that are presented as it's not something that can actually be controlled by certain people they're just there and if you've seen it, you know what I mean. You'll probably know what I mean. It speaks to stratification of society uh, along financial lines, but also how that isolates people of different incomes from each other, creating lack of understanding and decency. Uh, clear stratification of society financially, which actually makes it potentially culturally. Um, regionally, that's another thing too. You have to think about the fact that based off how much money people make, dictates a lot of times where they live and then where they live will a lot of times dictate who they interact with on a daily basis then who they start connecting with who they can sympathize with versus other people that they don't live near who they don't know you know it's a whole big thing of like city life versus rural life and how people's views on life and all sorts of things are very different religion politics all that stuff it's so different because of what grouping you're living with and interacting with and a lot of that it ends up being tied to monetary stuff especially talking about you know like inner inner city and then building outwards you know inner city suburbs rural all that stuff so it's just something that that occurred to me through this and they do make this point it's very very interesting and well done in my opinion the actual concept of kind of trickle down economics is is it play in this as well i think they're making a big point about that um you'll know what i'm talking about if you've already seen it if you don't check it out and i'll talk about that more probably on the live stream it makes a point of consumerism kind of as something that can end up imprisoning people and not actually being all that liberating and i'm talking about it more from the standpoint of once it keeps going and going and going and it's not put in check like you're taking all the rules out you're you're kind of just letting it do its own thing because that's one of the big things with this is, you know, presenting a system or pres presenting a situation to people or providing something or some things to people and giving no guidelines, not talking to anyone, just throwing it out there and just seeing how people deal with it. What's going to happen, you know? The inability for people to come together and work for a common good is, is rooted in unchecked checked capitalism. It becomes a selfish fist fight to get as much as you can, which keeps others from getting either more or what they need. And this film hits that home, like, a lot. Uh, at some point, it, it may kind of seem like they're kind of beating you over the head with it. For me, it kind of went up to that line. It didn't quite pass that line, but... I mean, it's making strong points in this. It's not like subtext type things. These things are very clear in the film. Further, uh, those involved in the selfish and unchecked accrual of wealth end up blaming the system and claim that they're not responsible for how they treat others as they're just doing what the system informs them that they should do, basically. 
Um, that's something that happens all the time in life in many, many realms, and it's on display very much so in this film, of people who are in a situation or dealing within a certain system, and they say, well, you know, I did this, but that's not me. I'm not responsible for that. That's just the system. Like, that's just what the system is. And because the system is what it is, that's why I have to act this way or I have to do this. And it makes a very strong point about that. And it's kind of at what point can people step away and say, no, to some degree, I am responsible for this uh, and actually, you know, recognize that there's human agency involved and it's not just... I have to do this because this is how things are set up. And within the context of the film, things aren't even necessarily, you know, defined or set up. People just, you know, it's how things naturally work out. You'll know what I mean. This film was the horror version of a uh, actual thing that I did in a leadership course. It, it's an exercise I did in a leadership course to kind of... Uh, talk about um, communication and lack of communication and making assumptions and, you know, going into an exercise or a project or um, whatever, a meeting, anything, and not interacting with the other people so much, but just going off of what you think and what you want and making assumptions about what other people think and what they want and what they're going to do. And, no lie, that exercise that I did in that leadership course is 100% what this movie was. This is just the horror extreme version of it, and it's very interesting. And on my um, live stream about this, I'll talk more about what that actual exercise was, because I don't want to give too much away in this actual review, since it's no spoilers. Uh, if you want a fair and just society, you can't just provide money and then leave the masses to figure out how to responsibly divide it themselves, because it's not going to happen, most likely. I think that was kind of the one of the ultimate... It's not what the ending said to me. Um, like I said, I'm not going to talk about that. I'll talk about that on the live stream. But it's what a lot of the strong thematic stuff made a point of. So it's one thing they're mainly driving at in this film, which is you know how society's kind of broken because things have just gone so far specifically unchecked capitalism so it's interesting um it's also really well done like it looks great like i said it's super super bleak the writing the script is really really good the characters are believable they act in a believable manner within the situations um there's a lot of surprises that go, that go on like things you're not expecting necessarily and like i said like there's that classic kind of in your face basic um visceral horror that is nice to have in these films so overall this isn't a perfect film or anything i did quite like it though i think people should definitely check it out so out of five stars with half stars in play i'm going to give this a very solid four star rating um it's quite good i would have liked the the end to actually be different but it's it's not to say that it's bad it's just for how much i was getting out of the themes of it i wanted there to be a more clear statement at the end and i it's not there like there there is a statement but it's kind of i think a lot of people will, will interpret it differently and that's why i want to do a live stream on this to see what a lot of other people's interpretations are of it so anyway uh thanks everyone for checking this out do me a quick favor hit that subscribe if you haven't already especially because if you want to be involved in the live streams i'm going to be doing um, if you hit subscribe and you hit the notification bell, you will know when I'm jumping on. So that is great. Uh, put some comments down there if you've seen this and you want to talk about it or anything else. And hit that thumbs up if you would like to, especially if you were already subscribed and you want to let me know, hey, I'm still watching and I appreciate it. But regardless, thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.